Hi. <laughs> Hi, lovely people. Um, yes, welcome. Oh, my God, how lucky am I? <laughs> uh, I was, uh, again, worrying that, the, um, that I'd have to do this indoors. And um, the sun's come out for me, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, so let's see, what have we got here? Mark, for some reason I can never watch it live. Okay, all right, mate. Um, something to do with your Wi-Fi, I expect. You could try plugging in an Ethernet cable. It might be quicker. Um, and the question is, looking at breath in a moving practice, we'll take on the whole inhale, up, exhale, down thingy. Uh, uh, no, mate, that, 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 was, that, was one, um, that was one workshop. It wasn't, it's not the way to breathe. It's, an eye, it's something to play with. Um, more about wisdom, wisdom of the body, sure. Which is part of the same question. Yes, absolutely. It is the same question. Okay, Katie. Hi, Katie. I've had a persistent neck and shoulder tension for months. I feel like I'm unraveling my spine, but, but a bit tangled here. Okay. Um, yep, okay. Bit of a loss through shoulder pain. Shoulder pain has improved. Uh, 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 there's nothing wrong with your trapezius muscle. It's just doing its job, Katie. Um, dear Mark, what can I do to stop grinding my back teeth? <laughs> happens when I sleep, and sometimes I notice it happening when I'm awake. Well, that, that's um, that's control tension, Pete. Um, that, uh, I, I'm very familiar with that one, um, having suffered from it myself. Um, yeah, um, the the habit of doing it when you sleep is um, hard to regulate because you're asleep. Um, but um, there, there's a thing you can get. There's um, there's a look look for it on eBay. Um, it's um, it's a sort of rubber plastic thing you stick on your tongue. It suctions onto your tongue, and it's and it pulls the tongue forwards uh, inside the plastic so you can't uh, close your teeth. Um, so that will help at night. And uh, the rest of the time, when you're awake, it's about it's about the stress and tension of trying to um, control. And it might be controlling your speech. It might be controlling your direction. All sorts of things. I'd imagine the hips go with that as well. So, um, hi Abigail. Hi Alan. Um, Katie Robinson, where are you, by the way? I'm in, I'm in my garden in Hove, <laughs> believe it or not. Incredible microclimate. It seems to, the sun come, comes out for me every time I, I do these things. I, I can't rely on this forever. So I'm, I'm dying for my garden yoga haven, my yoga palace to be built, um, which should be before the next summer, um, hopefully. But if anyone out there has got any spare cash sitting around, um, do help, <laughs> do pass it on, and, and I don't know, I'll give you lots of yoga for it or something. Uh, help get the project started. Uh, anyway, yes. So, uh, yeah, all these, all these things. So neck and shoulders, certainly. And breathing, uh, breathing quality of something. What was it? Wisdom of the body, yes. Uh, jaw tension, yes, well, um, Oh, well, yes, you can. There's a mudra you can do when you're practicing. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Anyone can try this, and it helps still the mind a little as well. You just put the tip of the tongue onto either behind the back teeth, so it's slightly curled up, um, or further back into the hard palate or further back into the soft palate if you've got a very long tongue and been practicing a lot. Um, it, it creates a little space between the teeth and it gives you a sort of suction space in the back of the mouth that um, can suspend the jaw so you don't have to hold your jaw closed. Uh, with the mouth open, um, by necessity, the jaw muscles have to be engaged. But uh, with the lips closed and the tongue towards the roof of the mouth somewhere, um, you can create a sort of suction thing. It's called Kachari Mudra. And it stops you speaking. <laughs> stops you speaking and stops you um, con controlling with the jaw. I would also, Pete, I would also look for space in your hips as you practice. Um, the, the two sort of ends of control go together. Okay? So, uh, <laughs> neck, shoulders, and whole body wisdom. 
certainly. Okay. Uh, where to start? Well, uh, I've got 15 minutes, so I will need to get going. So the 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 um, you've got the idea, Katie. It's not um, it's not the shoulders problem. It certainly isn't your trapezius muscles problem. Um, it is uh, that thing that you're experiencing as a neck and shoulder problem is a relationship between you and your head, <laughs> as well as the use of the arms and shoulders. Of course, um, the way you use your arms is going to be creating a sort of a thing that you do in your shoulders that uh, pulls into the spine and the way you hold your head and the way too many things too many things to organize and correct and this is not what we're trying to do um, what we need to do is to go directly into the relationship that um, leaves you free of these issues and that's what we need to do I think um, so I think the most pertinent relationship there would be between your head and your middle, your head and your middle. And um, if those relationships work themselves out, then the shoulders should be free to behave as they're meant to, you know, as, as wings or, or your arms as support or, you know. Um, so between the head and the middle, and the, the question from Mark, the um, up-down breathing, uh, that, that was just um, the particular thing he referred to as a, um, a particular line of inquiry to help the mind um, follow a particular sequence of releases um, that, are, that um, is potential, a potential. It's not necessarily how the breath works at all. It's, it was just a... Um, a thing to play with, a sensory imagination uh, thing. Breathing and body intelligence, absolutely. Now the, the, the body will breathe and the body is intelligent. As in, um, whatever you're doing, the body will work out how to breathe, will work out. Um, it, it, you'll have to breathe. So whatever you're doing, the body will breathe. If you want to access more freedom, then you need to access more choices, which means inherently noticing where you're not breathing and allowing it, allowing it to breathe and working out the whole body so that um, that choice becomes available. Um, this all sounds like a lot of work and a lot of change, and it is, um, but I think because this is about solutions, this this um, broadcast, and I have 11 minutes now, so I better get on with it. Um, I'll go straight to the solution. And the solution is in the middle of things. So what I'll do is I'll angle this up so you can see me on the mat. Let's see, is that about right? Yeah, that's about it. Okay, and uh, just turn it a little. Let's see. Okay, so when, when, we're do, when we're doing this stuff, um, uh, Pete, you um, make sure you're relaxing your jaw. So keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth and the jaw slightly slack, a bit of space between the teeth. Um, Katie, uh, if you're doing something habitual with your shoulders, like pulling them down your back, then you won't be able to resolve the issue. Okay, so you need to have an awareness of the spaciousness, potential spaciousness um, underneath the shoulder girdle. This is probably the last opportunity of the year, so I'm going to do my taps off thing. <laughs> so here we go. And uh, uh, partly to show what's, what's going on, partly because I prefer not wearing clothes. <laughs> um, so what are we going to do? Yes, the, the solution. The solution is in understanding that everything, every complaint that you have, every joint, every issue, the shoulders, the hips, the, 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 the knees, the ankles, the, the sacroiliac even, um, all these issues are a function of your relationship to the space above and 
the touch below. And if you can, uh, like I was doing on Thursday, if you can use your touch below to find a relaxed relationship to the space above, and if you can use your engagement with the space above and all around to find a relaxed relationship to the earth below, then between those things, the body will sort itself out. Okay. Now, specifically, um, I won't uh, just just stay kind to your hips and your jaw, Pete. Um, I'll, I'll deal with shoulders, I think. So, a, a way of um, taking the the habit of pulling the shoulders around with the local muscles, which is not where the support is anyway. It's it's in the top of the chest where the structure is. Um, where your wings start, you know, a way of, of disabling that or disabling the need for that or the habit of it is to catch hold of a wrist and to, um, so you've got a hand turning away from you and to place the weight of that dead center on the head so that you can relax the shoulders, but they sort of relax wide. They don't relax down, you know? they relax wide. So a little engagement, a little pull, if you like, on the wrists. Um, just to engage with the space either side of you will, will give you the sense of the the wings as a as a as a as a, a structure that centers at the top of the chest and underneath which there is space underneath your collarbones and inside the shoulder blades behind you so they become wings not these things that we hold ourselves up with um, Placing the weight on the head means that you in, you start to engage with the space above the head um, as a surface to support the weight of the relaxed shoulders. And if you do that um, as you explore space, then you start to develop a relationship to the space above you from the spine as opposed to from the neck and the bump of the base of the neck and the, the junction between the, the head and the body, basically. Okay. So that's the arrangement that helps you free up the space between, uh, free up the shoulders and, and start to get a relationship between the head in space. And I'd like you to be interested in the ribs in the middle, okay? Because if you've got space to breathe above these middle ribs, you'll, you'll have a feeling of the breath wide across the heart, wide with the shoulders into the armpits, wide all the way up into the skull, wide, if you can. And that's uh, the pranayama is seat cardi. I think I've done that with you, Katie. Um, seat, car. <sighs> the car gets the ribs, the sound car gets the ribs to engage away from the where the head is. It, and <sighs> that gathering down away from the ribs takes out all the problems in the shoulders. It's a relationship between head and the middle, see, through, through breathing, through the release of the breath particularly. So the arrival of the breath, you give yourself space above from the heart out to the arms. And there's a widening, there's a pulling wide from the arms that helps. The head is meeting space above with an appropriate distance between the middle and above. So you're not, you know, carrying the weight of the world on your neck and shoulders. So there's a meeting of the touch, meet, meeting of the hands that takes the weight of the shoulders. You breathe wide, and then as you release the breath, it's away from that height. <sighs> and the ribs gathering as a result, away from the wings. The result is going to be a relationship between the head and the, and the middle that goes through the spine. Okay? But it depends on what's happened in the space below. Same thing. Hips and shoulders, knees and ankles, they have to be relaxed. And the only way they're going to be relaxed is if you have a breathing relationship that is in this space here, this abdominal space that we usually um, hang off our spines, you know, or <laughs> carry with our backs. This abdominal space needs to have enough distance, enough space away from the touch of the feet. And you can find that from the use of the fronts of the feet balls of the feet and the heat and the outer edge if you can create that upward space and if you can allow the back of your base the heels to drop away from you with that space then the result is less problems in your hips in your knees and your ankles all, all those issues disappear when you have a good distanced relationship between the ground and your middle that relates to the breathing with the release of the breath 
you have a relationship between the feet and the middle that supports you. So if I can have s s enough distance from the feet to my middle to allow this spaciousness, and as I release the heels away from me, allow space in the back of the spine as well, as I release the breath. If I can have enough space around the shoulders to allow the head to meet the heavens and the ribs to drop away from that as I release the breath, seat, car. And what happens is the weight goes into the middle and transmits to the ground and the space moves up the middle and transmits into space through the head. So it's away from the hands and it's like using the hands to pull yourself up a little. And that, that helps the space come up. And then as you release the breath around that, the ribs drop away from the hands. And it's like using the feet, using the feet for the ribs to land on. But as you engage from the center of the feet up through the middle, it allows you the distance away from the ground so that the spine can land with impunity. So everything gathers in, away from the feet, away from the hands, away from, the, away from everything, away from the head. Everything gathers in, away from everything to culminate in the release of the breath in the middle. And when that happens, you can rest outwards from the middle through the feet and into space. Uh, you don't have to be doing a backbend to do that. Um, the feet go down and the middle comes up. Fronts the feet go down, the middle comes up. And the spine can rest away from that with the heels. The wings engage with space. And the ribs fall away from that. Wings engage for space and the ribs fall away from that. And they fall away from the head with the release of the breath. So the spine becomes free of the head. So from space, you can find the middle to release weight away from the head. Away from the, the head and the spine. Through the spine. And from the feet, you can... Release away from the middle, uh, away from the feet in the middle. And then as you release the breath, there's distance between the heels and the spine. There's distance between the head and the spine. And it all culminates in support that is happening as you let the breath go into the center, from which... You let go of tension. You let go of tension out in all directions at once. Away from the wings, away from the legs. Away from the head, away from the root. Into the center. So um, does that, in, does that uh, answer your breathing question mark? I hope so. Um, see other co comments there? Yeah. Katie, ah, oh, different perspectives than we sometimes see and think. Yes, certainly, always. I think um, that's um, a required um, part of practicing yoga. We're, we're always looking for, for different perspectives because... Um, if the current one, it might be serving us better than than previous ones, as we learn. Yeah. But um, if you want the yoga con to continue doing its work, then we need a fresh perspective the next day, no matter how amazing the thing we discovered yesterday was. It becomes normal. It becomes our normality to have that amazing thing happen. And then to find the newness, which is where the yoga occurs, we, uh, we have to have brand new presence to what we're doing. 
and uh, within that you can start building a, a useful map of um, experience and useful map of reality useful map of the body so there you go hope that was useful awesome stuff thank you katie i'm glad you liked it pleasure pete um, I hope that worked for you as well, Mark, when you watch this on replay. And anyone else that happens to be watching, I hope that was useful for you. Uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Kishori. Um, dissolving tension inside the face and head. Well, if, um, ah, it's a choice. It's not dissimilar to um, uh, Pete's question. But again, if you, t if you take the, 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 the job of weight bearing out of your face and give it to your center, then the face becomes just a light expression of your center, you see. And, of, and for you, of course, it's the heart. Um, for everyone, it's the heart, but, um, because that's the center of the release of the breath. Um, but it's also, in, in physicality, it's the, it's the space underneath the heart, the solar plexus, the city of jewels, the, the um, center of contradiction in terms of, in chakra terms. Okay. Okay, that'll do. Um, I can't think of what to promote at the moment. I'm coming up to Edinburgh in um, October. We're doing a, a, a two-day workshop, myself and Abigail Pack, uh, to introduce the Aquaviva stuff. That's towards the end of October. I've got a joint clinic on um, 20th of October on a Friday in Edinburgh. Um, what else? Yes, um, that's about it. I guess there's, uh, there's workshops, there's uh, stuff coming up in Lancashire and other things later on in the year. Um, yes, yeah, so, oh, I won't be here next week, uh, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, off on a meditation retreat with some friends, which um, is going to be very nice. But uh, after that, I'll be back and be back uh, with a regular spot. I'm a bit nervous about not being in my garden, um, which will happen at some point. But we'll see. It'll, it might be good for me to stretch my comfort zone a bit but um like i said if there's anyone out there with lots of spare cash then do pass it my way so i can get this thing started <laughs> um uh yes and i'll see you in a, a a couple of weeks so thank you very much i hope that was useful do pass it on do share share the love that's my primary mission to get this stuff out there and when i have my garden building it'll be the headquarters for such things so um, namaste. I'm, I'm, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. I shall see you in a couple of weeks.